Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, and today we're actually going to be talking a little bit about uh, VRED uh, from Autodesk. Now this gets lumped into the visualization and animation software packages that you can get for you know, pre-visiting different objects before making them. You know, it could be something simple and inconsequential as a little rivet or a bullet for that matter all the way up to you know airplanes vehicles the sky is essentially the limit no pun intended with this scene that I have here in front of you but there are many different products that you can use and today we're just going to touch on VRED now there used to be where you can um, well you could still do uh, 3ds max you could still load up Maya you could still load up cinema 4d if you want to go that route but if you're looking for something that's a little bit quicker to mess around with you don't really want to take some of the time that you would have to do uh, with, now 3ds max is technically a little bit easier because you could take CAD data directly into 3ds max without jumping through a few hoops like you have to do with Maya but either way you could still go the route of your Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, and the other uh, 3D animation software that's out there. You can also do, you know, Bunk Speed. They have, I believe, three or four different uh, variants. I believe it's HyperShot, HyperShot, or uh, HyperShot, HyperMove, HyperDrive, and then I think just Bunk Speed Shot. You also have KeyShot from Luxian, and there's a couple more out there. Showcase, I do believe, is the now defunct. And I believe, essentially, what has happened is you had Alias, which merged into Showcase, and now you have Showcase, which is essentially now VRED. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's how it's going out. Because this reminds me a lot of Showcase, and I think all they did was, you know, shine it up a little bit and add some stuff to it. But here we just have a uh, good old MiG-31 Foxhound. I have the ray tracing and everything turned off right now, mainly because this is not a pro-based uh, workstation that I'm working on. This is actually one of our video workstations that I'm working on, and it does not have a pro card in it, unfortunately, mainly because we don't really require it. But I'll go through some of the stuff here. Uh, the graph is a little to be desired, at least as far as I'm concerned. It's kind of set up like... You know, your Maya and even Inventor. But there are a few things that I don't care for. And it's just the way uh, you can move some of your stuff around, turn it on, turn it off. It seems to be a little cumbersome uh, for me. Normally, I would, you know, if I go to Transform, <clears throat> I could just, you know, grab hold of one of the... Uh, one of the arrows on the UDC, but unfortunately, or UDS rather, unfortunately, you can't do it like that. Now, I haven't really figured out a way to do it other than clicking on the transform button down here and then actually doing the transform. You know, you have your uh, little bars or whatever you want to call it. I did not want to move that, but, or uh, not bars, but wheels, and then you can also type in. An actual dimension. I think it's a little cumbersome, but that's my two cents on the matter. You may think that it's perfectly okay, and hey, that's all right too. So, aside from that, we also have where you can assign your materials. Now, I'll bring this over here. Yeah, I'll just close out my graph. Give me a little bit more room to work. I'm used to running dual monitors and having to record this on a single monitor is a little funky. But you can have your materials so you can create anything and everything from a thong all the way down to a light portal with everything else in between. You know, plat uh, you have your plastics, your reflective plastics, chrome, brush, metal, unicolor, car paint, metallic car paint, flip flop car paint, Glass, carbon, carbon 2D, tire, velvet, woven cloth, line chrome, uh, X-rate measured. I'm actually not sure what that is. OCS materials, shadow, multipass, your layered materials, 
switch materials, and you also have your light portal as well as custom. Now, quite frankly, I've never clicked on custom yet, never really needed to. Here you can create your sphere environment, your skylight, and you can do an environment switch. All nifty, all easy to come, uh, I guess, around to. Uh, it's one of those things that it's real easy to just right click and start going to town on things that you need. You have your open GL materials. You have simples, chunks, fongs, multipass, merge, and switch. You can edit some of your attributes and some of your objects. You can convert your objects. You can load materials, save materials, select your nodes, apply to nodes, and so on and so forth. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this actually seems to go a little bit quicker than it would for me to do something in Maya or 3ds Max. Not saying that it's you know perfect for the application, but 3ds Max, when it comes to applying some materials, at times can be a little funky. Mainly because I'm a Maya person, that's probably why I'm still not 100% uh, up to snuff as far as 3ds Max goes. But again, teach their own. On top of that, you have your cameras, where you can throw down cameras and all that other good stuff, add cameras, delete cameras, change your processings, uh, you know, you have your different tone maps, what your exposure and white balance is, your glows, your glares, lens attributes, uh, viewing angles, clipping angle, or uh, clipping dimensions, or clipping planes, animation settings, Plus, you have your distortion map, collision detection, projections, on and on and on. You have your curve section, uh, mainly if you're getting into some of your uh, animations. V sets, or variant sets. I am going to come out and honestly tell you, I have no clue really about V sets. I've never really used it as of right now. I should probably look into it. And then, of course, you have your render settings which very similar to something that you would see from like Maya or 3ds Max it's real simple you have your you know your image outputs where you want to put it you can put a timestamp on it if you wish your size your uh, image size resolution information you know whether you uh, want to change your quality what your render mode is samplings multi passes um, if you're using a cluster so if you have like six or seven computers hooked up on a cluster and you want to render out to all those computers to kind of drop down that render time pick your different settings you know your pixel filters and how many samples you want go over on the ray tracing you could do photon tracing IBL sampling qualities trace depths I mean it is one of those things that makes life a little bit easier at least as far as I'm concerned you also have the ability to turn your stati uh, statistics on where you can see what you have here I mean it's actually well done I mean it's not as much information as I see in like my n 3ds max so I actually really like that now, on top of this, you also have a couple things. I have, like I said, my anti-alias and my ray tracing turned off. Now, this, you can enable ray traced or enable downscale uh, anti-aliasing. Now, I will actually click on both of these and let it crank. This is where your CUDA cores and the wonderful technology from NVIDIA will come into play to help you out you can utilize that information to help you render instead of relying 100% on your CPU. If you have a, a serious beast of a GPU uh, node where it's using a lot of that GPU to help with your rendering, it's going to help you out so much in the long run. But the downside with that is it gets really expensive. I'm going to kill this. It'll, basically what it'll do is it'll continue sampling like it would on your uh, just like it would with like your real-time rendering inside of Maya or inside of 3ds Max or you know some of the other programs that you'll probably be either using or familiar with 
So if you haven't already, hop on Autodesk's website, download the trial, see if it's something that's going to help you out. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Give it a try. You it really won't lose nothing. I mean, it's one of those things. Uh, and quite frankly, it's one of those awesome, awesome time-saving measures that I've come across where I could just go in and well actually if I find the right folder but I can go in I can straight import some of my HDRs I can import all my materials I can import my uh, CAD data just all of it bring it in here I don't have to worry about plugins and all that other stuff I don't have to sit there and play with different objects in order to get a nice, uh, how would I put that, a nice tone map. I don't have to jump through hoops for global uh, lighting settings and all that other good stuff. If you have any questions, concerns, comments uh, regarding this program, or regarding any information in general, throw that in the comment box below. Uh, don't forget to share the video, hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs down depending on if you like it, if you found it informative, or if you, quite frankly, just prefer something like Luxian or Bunk Speed. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're going to start pushing this channel more and more. Unfortunately, we've been busy, but we're starting to change that. Hit that good old subscribe button that'll let you know every single time we push out a video, and it helps us tremendously. And again, don't forget to share. Until next time, I'm Matt from Lathrum, and I will see you guys next time.